when leaders don't create the space to do things in an environment that is not so treacherous, when there's high stakes, highly complex environments with high consequence, with no ability to uh, redo or learn, uh, those are absolutely the conditions that no one wants to work in. There's a common problem a lot of enterprises experience. They hire people, they uh, accumulate resources, and then when it comes time to execute towards converting those resources into some useful product or service which satisfies on the mission, they fail. Leaders shape the organization, and thereafter the organization shapes us. And so I think one of the responsibilities of leaders is to protect that time so that we can do work not in the performance environment, but in the safer arenas of planning. Wiring the winning organization tries to accomplish is explain to leaders what very practically they can do, for whom they're responsible, change the conditions in which they work. Often, too often, we put people in a difficult situation, what we've been calling in this book, a danger zone where we ask them to solve problems in environments which are fast moving, which is not conducive to being reflective and that sort of thing. There's this incredible magic of winning organizations that are somehow able to fully liberate people's creativity and problem solving capabilities. You have to have time scheduled for planning and practice so that you're not doing the most dangerous work in production. You can't do work where you have high stakes and be able to fail, learn and improve. So what's the solution here? Is that we explain to leaders that by employing these three mechanisms, the enterprise as a whole is going to be better positioned to meet the demands it's accepted for itself. In order to do what you need to get done, you have to communicate and coordinate with scores of other teams. And so you can't move your piece without all the other team members agreeing to move their piece. Why focus on the individual? Because that uh, difference in experience that individuals have between the drudgery, the disappointment, the danger, versus the exhilaration, the exaltation of being a part of something much larger, that's the difference that leaders can create. You need to go into the workspace, look at the individual, and look at the individual and ask the question, what experience is she or he having today? Find people for whom you are responsible and ask them, are you treated with dignity and respect? Are you given whatever you need to succeed and does this bring value to your life? And are you recognized for what you do by someone whose opinion matters? Conditions that generate a no to any of these merit correction.